السلام عليكم طلابنا الأعزاء اليوم رح نبلش وياكم أول محاضرة بكورس العيون وياكم دكتورة هند أحمد Our lecture today is about conjunctiva Starting with simple review of anatomy and histology of the conjunctiva The conjunctiva is a transparent mucous membrane lining the inner surface of the eyelids and the surface of the globe as far as the limbus it is richly vascular. There is a dense lymphatic network with drainage to the preauricular and submandibular nodes corresponding to that of the eyelids. It has a key protective role mediating both passive and active immunity. Anatomically, it is subdivided into the following. First, the palpebral conjunctiva. We can see these parts in this diagram. The first one, the palpebral conjunctiva, which is demarcated here with this lining by blue color. Start at the mucocutaneous junction of the lid margin and is firmly attached to the posterior tarsal plates. Next to it, the fornicial conjunctiva in black color, which is loose and redundant, thrown into folds. The third part is the bulbar conjunctiva, which covers the anterior sclera and is continuous with the corneal epithelium at the limbus, which is shown here by red color. Histologically, the conjunctiva is divided into the epithelium, which is non-keratinized, and around five cell layers, goblet cells are located within the epithelium. Second, the citroma, in which the accessory lacrimal glands of Krauss and Wolfring are located. And the third part, an important part, is conjunctiva-associated lymphoid tissue, CALT which is critical in the initiation and regulation of acne. In our lecture, we will talk about several types of conjunctival disease. One of it, bacterial conjunctivitis. We will discuss few important topics related to bacterial conjunctivitis. Acute bacterial conjunctivitis is a common and usually self-limiting condition caused by direct eye contact with infected secretion. The most common isolate are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staph aureus, Haemophilus influenzae, and Moraxella cateralis. The diagnosis according to symptoms and sign. The symptoms start as acute onset of redness, grittiness, burning, and discharge. Involvement is usually bilateral, although one eye may become affected one to two days before the other. On awakening, the lids are frequently stuck together and may be difficult to open. The signs that noticed is eyelid edema, Second, conjunctival injection that is diffuse, beefy red, and more intense away from the limbus. And we can notice that in our slide here. This the sign of red, beefy color of the conjunctiva. The discharge can initially be watery, mimicking viral conjunctivitis, but rapidly become mucoparulent as seen in the second slide. Treatment of acute bacterial conjunctivitis. About 60% of cases resolve within five days without a treatment. Topical antibiotics, four time daily, for up to one week are frequently administered to speed recovery and to prevent reinfection and transmission. 
ointments and gels provide a high concentration for longer period than drops but daytime use is limited because of blurred vision the following antibiotics are available chloramphenicone aminoglycoside quinolone like ciprofloxacin ofloxacin and others type polymyxine B, fusidic acid, and bastracine. Systemic antibiotics are required in H-influenza infection, for example, particularly in children. It is treated with oral amoxicillin with clavulanic acid because there is a 25% risk of developing otitis Adult chlamydial conjunctivitis is an oculogenital infection usually caused by serovars D to K or chlamydia trachomatis and affect 5 to 20 percent of sexually active young adults in Western countries who have urogenital infection in form of nonspecific urethritis. Trachoma is the leading cause of a preventable, irreversible blindness in the world. It is related to poverty, overcrowding, and poor hygiene, the morbidity being a consequence of the establishment of reinfection cycles within communities. Trachoma is associated principally with infection by serovar A, B, B, A, and C of chlamydia trachomatis. The fly is an important vector. Diagnosis. The features of trachoma are divided into the active inflammatory stage and the cicatricial chronic stage with considerable overlap. In front of you, the WHO grading of a trachoma. TF trachomatis inflammation follicular, five or more follicles more than 0.5 mm in size on the superior tarsus. TI trachomatis inflammation intense diffuse involvement of the tarsal conjunctiva, obscuring 50% or more of the normal deep tarsal vessel. Papillae are present also. TS trachomatis conjunctival scarring, easily visible fibrous white tarsal bands. TT, trachomatis trichiasis, at least one large touching the globe. CO, corneal opacity, sufficient to blur details of at least part of the pupillary margin. Here we can see the signs of trachoma inflammation. First slide showing the mixed follicular and papillary reaction, more prominent in the superior tarsus. Second slide or second picture showing the intense inflammation creeping from conjunctiva over the superior cornea. And here the subconjunctival scarring are this line, this white line prominent in superior tarsus. And lastly, the trichiasis, which is the posterior abnormal misdirected lash that touch the cornea with consequence of corneal opacity. Now for management of trachoma, there is the safe strategy for trachoma management supported by the WHO. And other agencies in composites for S surgery for trichiasis, A antibiotics for active disease, F facial hygiene, and E environmental improvement. A single dose of azithromycin 20 mg per kg up to 1 gram is the treatment of choice. Neonatal conjunctivitis, ophthalmia neonatorum.
is defined as conjunctival inflammation developing within the first month of life. It is the most common infection of any kind in neonates, occurring in up to 10%. Causes First, Chlamydia trachomatis, Neisseria gonorrhea, now rare in developed countries, and occasionally herpes simplex virus, typically herpes simplex virus 2, which may be associated with severe ocular or systemic complication. Second, staphylococci are usually responsible for mild conjunctivitis. Other bacteria include streptococci, Haemophilus influenzae, and various gram-negative organisms. Third, topical preparation used as a prophylaxis against infection may themselves cause conjunctival irritation. Fourth, despite poor neonatal tear production, a persistently mildly watery eye with recurrent mild bacterial conjunctivitis may be secondary to congenital nasolacrimal duct obstruction. Signs The type of discharge varies according to the underlying cause. Severe eyelid edema occur in gonococcal infection. Eyelid and periocular vesicles may occur in herpes simplex virus infection. Keratitis in gonococcal or herpes simplex virus infection. Treatment with systemic and tropical antibiotics with need for specialist advice. Adenoviral conjunctivitis, a separate of this highly contagious disease, is facilitated by the ability of viral particles to survive on dry surfaces for weeks and by the fact that viral shedding may occur for many days before clinical features are apparent. Signs that occur in adenoviral conjunctivitis may include eyelid edema and tender preauricular lymphadenopathy. Prominent conjunctival hyperemia and follicles that is appear here in this image. These are the follicles in the inferior fornix. Severe inflammation may be associated with conjunctival hemorrhages, chemosis, membrane, and pseudomembrane. Here is the membrane. Keratitis, as shown in this image by these multiple scattered white infiltrates. An adenoviral disease characterized by following. Punctate epithelial keratitis may develop within 7 to 10 days of the onset of the symptoms and resolve within 2 weeks. Focal white subepithelial or anterior citronal infiltrate may develop beneath the fading epithelial lesion and may persist or recur over months or years. Another presentation or another sign in adenoviral conjunctivitis which is uncommon, is a mild anterior uveitis. Presentation of adenoviral conjunctivitis may be variant, as shown in front of you, may be as non-specific acute follicular conjunctivitis, which is the most common. Ocular involvement is generally milder than in other forms of adenoviral infection. Second presentation, pharyngoconjunctival fever is caused by adenovirus 0, bar 3, 4, and 7. Keratitis develops in about 30% of cases but is seldom severe. Third presentation, epidemic keratoconjunctivitis is caused by adenovirus 0, var 8, 19, and 37. This is the most severe type and is associated with keratitis in about 80% of cases. 
the last presentation is a chronic relapsing adenoviral conjunctivitis. It's rare, but can persist for years, unfortunately. Management Spontaneous resolution usually occur within two to three weeks. Although we can reduce transmission risk, artificial tear may be useful for symptomatic relief, cold or warm compresses for symptomatic relief, topical steroids may be required for severe membranous or pseudomembranous adenoviral conjunctivitis and symptomatic keratitis. Now we will shift for allergic conjunctivitis, which is a common and important subject. Now we will discuss two topics regarding allergic conjunctivitis. The acute allergic conjunctivitis, which is common condition caused by an acute conjunctival reaction to an environmental allergen. Presentation is with acute itching and watering associated with severe chemosis. Treatment is not usually required. Cold compresses can be used. The second one is the seasonal and perennial allergic conjunctivitis. Are subacute condition that differ from each other by the timing of exacerbation because of different stimulating allergens in each. A presentation is with transient acute or subacute attacks of redness, watering, and itching associated with sneezing and nasal discharge. Signs which typically resolved completely between episodes consist of conjunctival hyperemia and a relatively mild papillary reaction. Treatment of these two conditions by number one artificial tears for mild symptom, two mast cell stabilizer need to be used for a few days before exerting maximal effect but are suitable for long-term use if required. 3. Antihistamine can be used for symptomatic exacerbation. Number 4. Combined preparation of the muscle stabilizer or antihistamine. Number 5. Topical steroids are effective but rarely necessary. Number six, oral antihistamine may be indicated for severe symptoms. An important and common topic is vernal keratoconjunctivitis, which is a recurrent bilateral disorder. It is primarily affect boys, and onset is generally from about the age of five years onward. Ninety-five percent of cases remit by the late teens, although many of the remainder develop atopic keratoconjunctivitis. Classification Palpebral vernal keratoconjunctivitis, which primarily involves the upper tarsal plate. We can see in this Images the superior tarsal conjunctiva. So keep in mind it affects primarily the superior tarsal conjunctiva. Limbal disease typically affects black and Asian patient. This is the limbal variant of vernal keratoconjunctivitis which affect the limbal area while these are the palpebral type also mixed vernal keratoconjunctivitis can be seen and show feature of both palpebral and limbal disease symptoms the symptoms consist of intense itching, 
which may be associated with lacrimation, photophobia, a foreign body sensation, burning, and thick mucoid discharge. Increased blinking is common. In the palpebral disease, as shown in these superior images in this slide, including conjunctival hyperemia and diffuse papillary hypertrophy on the superior tarsus. These are the diffuse papillary hypertrophy and here is the macropapillary less than one millimeter and these are the giant papillary more than one millimeter. We notice this slide or this image where the limbal disease is obvious here. These are the gelatinous limbal papillary. These scattered over the limbus. Keratopathy is more frequent in palpebral disease, including the following superior punctate epithelial erosions, epithelial macro erosions, plaque and shield ulcer, subepithelial scars, and lastly pseudo Toxin. Eye disease is usually mild in vernal keratoconjunctivitis in contrast to atopic keratoconjunctivitis. Atopic keratoconjunctivitis is a rare bilateral disease that typically develops in adulthood, peak incidence between 30 and 50 years following a long history of eczema. Asthma is also extremely common in these patients. Atopic keratoconjunctivitis tend to be chronic and unremitting. Eyelids Eyelids skin changes consist of hyperemia, dryness, scaling, thickening, sometimes with fissuring and scratches, excoriation, apparent here in the lateral canthus, associated with the chronic staphylococcal blepharitis. Conjunctival involvement, which is apparent here, is preferentially inferior palpebral involvement, while in vernal keratoconjunctivitis, as you remember, we talk about the predominancy of the involvement in the superior tarsus. This charge is generally more watery than stringy mucoid discharge in vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Papillae are initially smaller than in vernal keratoconjunctivitis, diffuse conjunctival infiltration and discarring may give a whitish, featureless appearance of the conjunctiva. Keratopathy, peripheral vascularization, and citromal scarring are common than in vernal keratoconjunctivitis as shown in this image. Cataract and retinal detachment can occur more common in atopic keratoconjunctivitis. Treatment of vernal keratoconjunctivitis and atopic keratoconjunctivitis. The management of vernal keratoconjunctivitis does not differ substantially from that of atopic keratoconjunctivitis, although the latter is generally less responsive and require more intensive and prolonged treatment. General measures include allergen avoidance, 
cool compresses and lit hygiene. Local treatments include mast cell stabilizer, antihistamine, combined preparation of an antihistamine and vasoconstrictor usually offer only limited relief whereas dual action antihistamine mast cell stabilizer are often effective. Steroids are used for A. Severe exacerbation of conjunctivitis and B. Significant keratopathy. Immune modulator like cyclosporine 0.05%. Systemic treatment may be needed by the use of antihistamine, help itching, promote sleep, and reduce nocturnal eye rubbing. Also, antibiotics may be used, especially in association with blepharitis. Surgery, also an option. Bandage contact lens wear may be appropriate to aid the healing of resistant epithelial defects. Superficial keratectomy may be required to uh, remove a plaque or the bright shield ulcer and allow epithelization and also surface maintenance restoration surgery. The last topic in our lecture is related to degenerative disease of the conjunctiva. Starting with degeneration, we will talk about pengiculum and pterygium. First, the pengiculum, which is an extremely common innocuous usually bilateral and asymptomatic elastoid degeneration of the collagen fiber of conjunctival citrum. The cause is believed to be actinic damage. Signs A yellow, whitish mound or aggregation of smaller mound on the bulbar conjunctiva adjacent to limbus. It is more frequently located at the nasal than the temporal limbus, although it is frequently present at both. We can see in this image this side, which is an early pingiculum. Treatment is usually unnecessary because the growth is very slow or absent. Pingiculitis treated with short course of steroid. Pterygium. Pterygium is a triangular fibrovascular subepithelial in growth of degenerative bulbar conjunctival tissue over the limbus onto the cornea. It typically develops in patients who have been living in hot climates and is with pingicula may represent a response to ultraviolet exposure and possibly to other factors such as coronic surface dryness. Symptoms Many small lesions are asymptomatic. Irritation and grittiness caused by adult effects at the advancing age due to interference with the precorneal tear form. Patients who wear contact lenses may develop symptoms of irritation at earlier stage due to edge lift. Interference with vision by obscuring the visual axis or inducing astigmatism. Intermittent inflammation similar to pingiculitis. 
signs. A pterygium is made up of three parts, a cup, an avascular, hollow like zone at the advancing age, a head and a body. There are three types of pterygium. Type 1 extend less than 2 mm onto the cornea. A deposit of iron may be seen in the corneal epithelium anterior to the advancing head and called stalker line. Type 2 involve up to 4 mm of the cornea. Type 3 incurs onto more than 4 mm of the cornea and involves individual axes. Treatment Number 1 the medical treatment of symptomatic patient involves tear substitute and topical steroid for inflammation. The patient may also be advised to wear sunglasses to reduce UV exposure and decrease the growth stimulus. Number two, surgical technique. Simple excision, bursicular technique, is associated with high rates of recurrence, about 80%. That may be more aggressive than the initial lesion. Simple conjunctival flap. Conjunctival autografting. Currently the most popular approach. The donor conjunctival patch is usually harvested from the superior paralumbar lesion, the site usually healed well. Adjunctive treatment with mitomycin C or beta irradiation, and finally, the use of amniotic membrane patch grafting. Thank you for your listening. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions at any time.